internet companies that were supported by advertising. Well, I say like, yo, a year before that we had zero. Now we had 300. This March we had 57 million. Who thought we would own advertising? Advertising is the most uh, frequent form of money making for us and we have enough people coming to our various online sites that advertisers are interested. And so that's been uh, for the last two years uh, the majority of our revenue. But then uh, merchandise as well. We have books, we have primers, email services. We do free massages as well. <laughs> Meet two wise fools, Tom and Dave Gardner. They are dedicated to debunking the gurus of Wall Street and sharing financial advice with other net users. The Motley Fools an archetypal web service, irreverent, inclusive, and informed, and growing like crazy. In the internet, things change every three months. You just can't possibly prepare. If, we're, if a typical company grows about 10% a year, we're growing about 15% a month. That means each month feels like a year. And if you saw Dave, he was about a foot and a half taller about a year ago. I was a, I was a fetching fellow back then. The Motley Fool today is a media company which is, whose mission is to teach people how to invest their own money. We have 600,000 households coming to the Motley Fool every month. Building communities where people can aggregate ideas. Let's say we, ha we put 100,000 people together in a block that are going to buy insurance or they're going to buy mutual funds. If we can package them together, have everyone work together, we're going to be able to cut prices significantly. And that's the beauty of, of, of going online, of being online. You have a voice. Everyone has their little uh, publishing house right there in their home. Everybody has Very ideas cool. to share. What makes a good fool? A fool is someone who thinks for herself, somebody who uh, is willing to roll up his sleeves and make his own decisions. One size fits all, actually. Yeah. This is a, oh, <laughs> there, my reputation precedes me. <laughs> Nothing foolish about saving money on groceries. A website called Planet U sends your grocery coupons direct to the checkout, replacing bulk mail and saving trees all at once. The idea came from hyper nerd Christine Comerford. The key concept is eating. If you don't eat, you're dead, okay? So how about taking the most basic thing that we all have to do right and bringing those packaged goods the people who promote this salsa whatever wheat thins okay bringing those people to advertise on the net because you've got to buy paper towels anyway so the thing is 325 billion coupons are distributed in the USA annually 2% are redeemed only 2% 2% yes 98% all right end up in the rubbish or in the recycling it is okay. totally ineffective so once you grab your Planet U promotions, either from a partner website or from the Planet U website, you can then say, I want my promotions mailed to me, or I want my promotions delivered to the store that I shop at. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can deliver them to the point of sale system. You walk in, you identify yourself by swiping whatever card you set up as your ID, all right? And then, ka-ching, the register receipt has a deduction. Ka-ching is right. In 1995, there were 27,000 commercial websites. In 1998, three quarters of a million, 30 times as many. Mail order is becoming email order, and you don't have to dress up to go shopping. In fact, you don't have to dress at all. In terms of infrastructure costs, buying underwear in your underwear is hard to beat. And if you buy the same underwear, you know exactly what the product is. You don't have to look at it. You, you buy Munsing wear 34s or whatever, you know, kangaroo pouch. You know, you know, 12 pair. Please mail it to my house. There's this very American temptation to use the internet to sell things. But what to sell? Well, everyone on the net can already read and write. So the first big commercial success is using digital technology to push that most analog of products, the printed word. But this is not Gutenberg being replaced by the World Wide Web. It's Gutenberg enhanced, using modern technology to sell books. Lots and lots of books. In the spring of 1994, I came across the statistic that web usage was growing at 2,300% a year. And outside of a Petri dish, I hadn't seen anything grow that fast. I made a list of 20 different products that you might be able to sell online and picked books as the first best product 
primarily because there are so many books. There's no way to have a two and a half million title physical bookstore. The largest physical bookstores in the world only have about 175,000 titles. And there's no way to have a print catalog. If you were to print the Amazon.com catalog, it would be the size of more than 40 New York City phone books. The basic technology is fairly simple. The problem was ubiquity of that technology. And this looked like, because of that growth rate, the first time ever that the basic technology needed to do electronic commerce in an acceptable way would be ubiquitous. So it actually turns out that the ubiquity of the internet is more important than the technology of the internet. The internet is creating the biggest Californian job boom since the gold rush. And America is running out of homegrown engineers. But the language of the internet is English. So wherever you come from, if you're a decent programmer and speak English, apply here. The sound of leather on willow. It's a cricket game. We're not in England. We're in Santa Clara County, the most heavily wired and networked community in the world. The Valley employs thousands of Indian-born engineers who bring with them not only their programming skills and their engineering degrees, but also their cricket balls and bats. Sunshine and a field to play is all we ask for. And since there's this big boom um, in America, in, in Silicon Valley here, um, which brought a whole bunch of engineers to come all the way from India, you know, we make the big you know, uh, trip up to America to work, and then we come here and find out that there's cricket being played. India is the second largest uh, country with the number of engineers after the United States uh, in the whole world. So I think that is a factor. And the second thing is because uh, it's an English-based system, it's a lot easier for people to come from India and integrate and uh, do business in the United States. With the arrival of the internet, companies here can now fill their job vacancies with skilled Indian engineers who don't have to leave India. Could be bad news for the local cricket scene. I work in an industry where there's zero unemployment. You can't get skilled labor at any price. So we're scouring the world, world market to get programmers. The quality of the people is astonishing. The loyalty of the people and the work ethic, the quality of their English, I mean, everything just blew us away. We just had a fabulous, have a fabulous experience uh, uh, in, in Bangalore, and we're expanding our operations there very, very rapidly. For all the outward differences, India's Silicon Valley has a lot in common with my Silicon Valley, starting with traffic jams and construction everywhere. The street signs and billboards are all in English. Bangalore is busy and booming because of the huge numbers of programmers Western companies are putting to work. The internet has become a worldwide digital communication network that rivals in size the telephone system. So here we are, 12,000 miles, 12 time zones away from where I live in Silicon Valley in California, in Bangalore, the Silicon Valley of India. Programmers here solve the problems of users around the world. Companies founded here serve customers in Europe and the United States. And it all happens because of the internet. So, so what we have done is to set up a um, company here, the kind of investment which you, which you see here, which you have made, oh, yeah. with a clear approach to do work in India, leverage those skills, develop those technology skills in India, so that we leverage that for Novell. Novell, the netware company from Utah, is constructing a new Indian headquarters building here. 21st century technology built by pre-industrial labor. We work with uh, GE, General Electric, almost all the units of GE, uh -huh. uh, Allied Signals, uh, Sequent, uh -huh. Xerox, Putnam Investor Services in Boston, uh -huh. uh, Tandem, Cisco, Stratacom. Sundar Sankaran is a...